is the Big Nickel in Sudbury. It's one of the most beloved landmarks in the country. People from all over Canada come here to take selfies with this giant coin. It's been here for more than 50 years, a tribute to the city's history as one of the world's big mining towns. The land beneath Sudbury is home to the richest nickel deposit on the planet. More than $500 billion worth of nickel and other metals has already been dug out of the ground. But how did that metal get there in the first place? Why is Sudbury the nickel capital of the world? Well, to understand what's in the ground down here, you have to go up there, all the way up there, into outer space. This is Canadiana. One point eight billion years ago, and the Earth is a very different place. The land is a barren, lifeless expanse. The only living beings are in the ocean, microscopic, single-celled organisms. But it's on this strange, unfamiliar planet that the story of Sudbury, Ontario begins, because something is coming. This is a comet, and it's come a very long way from the far reaches of the solar system on an orbit that might take it trillions of kilometers into outer space before turning back toward the sun. It's 10 to 15 kilometers across. It's traveling 36,000 kilometers an hour, and it's headed straight for the Earth. When the comet hit the planet as a meteorite, the impact was enormous. The cloud of debris probably stretched around the entire world. The crater left behind was 200 kilometers long, three times as big as the one made by the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. And this is the edge of it. Here at High Falls, the Onaping River tumbles 55 meters down the rim of the ancient crater. And even today, after nearly two billion years of erosion, what's left of the Sudbury Basin is still the second biggest impact crater found anywhere on Earth. And you can find evidence of the meteorite in rocks like this, too. These lines were formed by the shockwave from the impact a cataclysmic moment in time, frozen in stone. The impact was so powerful, it melted rock into magma. Some scientists think it might have even broken through the Earth's crust. That magma was filled with minerals like nickel. They pooled in the bottom of the gigantic crater, cooled off, and then waited down there for a very, very, very long time. Welcome to the late 1800s. Canada has just officially become a country, and it's being united by a brand new railroad. The Canadian Pacific Railway is being built all the way west to British Columbia. It's one of the most important promises of Confederation. The new railroad reached Sudbury in 1883, and it was right here, while they were blasting away at the stone to clear a route for the tracks, that a blacksmith noticed a patch of rust-colored rock. He just stumbled across the largest nickel deposit in the world. Indigenous people had been mining the land around Sudbury to make tools and jewelry for at least 10,000 years. But the blacksmith's discovery would change this place forever. The first big modern mine soon opened, and the settlers began to flood in. 
traveling up the new railroad to stake their claims. As the century came to a close, progress was speeding up. And with new technologies being invented all the time, nickel was being used for far more than just five cent coins. Even Thomas Edison made the trip north to try his hand as a prospector. He wanted nickel for one of his new inventions, a car battery he was working on with Henry Ford. Before long, Sudbury was one of the biggest nickel producers in the world. Just one Sudbury mine produced enough nickel to make almost half the Allied artillery used during the war. The city was transformed. Trees disappeared, replaced by smokestacks and chimneys. This one, the super stack, is the second tallest chimney in the world. The second tallest thing anyone has ever built anywhere in Canada, next only to the CN Tower. It was built so tall to prevent noxious gases from settling into the crater. The mines had become so productive that the air pollution had literally blackened the earth. 150 years after that first mine opened, and two billion years after the meteorite hit, Sudbury is still a city of mines. There are so many tunnels beneath my feet right now that if you put them end to end, they'd stretch nearly all the way across Canada. They go deep, too. And this one is the deepest of them all. We're now more than two kilometers beneath the surface of the Earth. We're in the Creighton Mine, which is still in operation more than 100 years after they first started digging. But this part of the mine isn't what it seems. There's something very unusual going on down here, and it's connected to a cosmic mystery. It's one of the most advanced physics laboratories in the world. It was built all the way down here, in a specially excavated section of the mine, so the rock would shield it from cosmic radiation. To get in here, you need to take a thorough shower and wear these special clothes, all to make sure you don't accidentally contaminate one of the lab's sensitive experiments. The Sudbury Neutrino Observatory Snow, the predecessor of Snow Lab, was originally built to detect neutrinos, an experiment that won the Nobel Prize. And today, the facility is still used for lots of research projects, including one of the great scientific quests of our time. This tank contains a giant ball. It's one of the most important scientific instruments in the world. It's at the center of the search for dark matter the mysterious substance that seems to make up 85% of all the stuff in the entire universe, even though we've never directly detected any of it. The ball contains argon, a stable, noble gas. And scientists hope that one day, after years and years of waiting, they'll get incredibly lucky, and a particle of dark matter will collide with the nucleus of an atom inside this ball, deep below Sudbury, and produce a tiny flash of light. The faint but spectacular ember that will prove dark matter really does exist and answer one of our grandest questions. So Sudbury isn't just an ordinary mining town. This mining town is deeply connected to the dark reaches of outer space thanks to the comet that crashed into this place nearly two billion years ago. Sudbury has become the perfect spot to stare back up at the sky from where it came and learn more about the vast mysteries of the universe. Remember how in the episode we were talking about Thomas Edison? Well, this building behind me is the Edison Building, which was named after the inventor, even though he only spent a couple of years in Sudbury. I'll tell you why in a moment. But first, I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more incredible stories from the history of Canada, you can click subscribe, and we have plenty more stories to tell. But to do it, we will need your help. 
you can become a patron on Patreon or give us a one-time donation on PayPal. Every little bit helps. It means the world to us. You can also follow us on social media at This Is Canadiana. And now, back to Thomas Edison. As we said, he came to Sebury looking for nickel to use in his inventions, and he found it. In fact, he found it not far from where I'm standing right now, just over there. And it was an incredibly rich find. But every time he sunk a new shaft, he ran into a layer of quicksand. And after a couple of years, he got sick of spending money on it and decided to head home to the United States, leaving it to others to profit, which they did enormously. A new company was founded, and it was named after this part of Sudbury. It was called Falcon Bridge. And before long, it was one of the biggest companies in Canada, and they needed a new headquarters. So in the 1960s, this building was built, and they named it the Edison Building in honor of the man who had found the vein that made them all rich. And I mean, like, incredibly rich. By the early 2000s, Falcon Bridge was pulling in nearly $7 billion US in profits every year. But then they got bought out by a Swiss company, and these headquarters were no longer needed. So they were given to the city of Sudbury. And today, they've been transformed into the city's archives. And this building, with a unique tie to Sudbury's past, is where that past is kept, protected, and preserved for future generations. I'm Adam Munch, and we'll see you next time on Canadiana.